Um, we appreciated you all being here on time, and uh, we we need to get started. But we're going to begin with our welcome you. And I'm Stuart Scow. V will also be presenting today, and we hope that uh, give you some good information. Um, if you have questions, we kind of like you to maybe hold them till the end, write them down, and, and we'll try to give you a, a chance to ask questions at the close of our presentation. Our agenda today is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about updates, uh, what's out there. Uh, we're going to talk about inventory, uh, re receivables management, payable management, fixed asset, and general ledger, and how closing takes place in those uh, venues. Um, we have uh, it's uh, GP10 this year. It's come to its end of its life, and so if you're on that, we want you to consider upgrading uh, so that you'll get the necessary code changes that'll have to take place for a couple of things that we'll be talking about later on. The current versions are GP10, uh, GP13, um, and the updates include to Service Pack 4 for, for GP10 and Service Pack uh, 2 2010. for 2010, yeah, and Service Pack 2 for uh, GP2013. And you can see the version numbers that they use up there, too. All of the updates, of course, are cumulative. And uh, updates need to be installed on all the servers and all workstations that have GP um, installed on them. Otherwise, you'll get a version error when you, you start. Uh, some of the things that we recommend, make sure you get up backups uh, before you do your upgrades. Um, and the Dynamics database and all company databases are what need to be backed up. Um, Export your reports and your forms to a package file, and then you'll be able to restore that if something goes wrong. Back up uh, modified reports and forms dictionary, and configure your uh, test environment to make sure you can test things out prior to converting your live data. And uh, Terry Armstrong and Sharon Quilter are who we have helping with those updates, so if you need to contact them, they uh, will be able to help you. And we'll give you that their contact information later. The order that we want to suggest that's suggested for closing in, uh, year end is you do inventory, then receivables, then payables, fixed assets, analytical accounting, and then general ledger. Um, payables has an impact on inventory, so that's kind of why. Payables also has an impact on fixed assets. Um, and then receivables have, of course, goes through the general ledger. And so that's, there's a, a pretty good reason why you want to close in that order. And that's the order we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to turn it over to V for. Okay. Um, for those who are uh, connecting online, I send you. I emailed you a copy of the uh, uh, the agenda, printed out so that you can use for um, taking notes. So check your email if you haven't uh, seen it yet. Okay, we're going to start with the inventory control. Uh, when should it be uh, the close be done? Inventory is not date sensitive, so make sure that you 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 do your closing before you start any transactions for the new year. And most of the time, inventory, you have control over uh, that when it should be closed. So uh, that's the thing. Make sure that you do that before uh, closing anything in the new year. And here, what does the year-end close process do? And it's like, what it does uh, transfer all the summarized current year quantity, the cost and sales amount to last year. So uh, you won't see those amount in your your current transaction, and that's 
there are some reports that those amount affect with uh, kind of like the uh, um, turn turnover report. So some of those reports you need to make sure that you print before you do the year end closing. It's also update the beginning quantity and zero out the quantity sold field. And also at, at the time of closing, you can select to remove discontinue item, remove sold receipt, sold uh, lot attributes, and updates the item standard cost. Okay. So the, uh, we're going to go through the steps uh, that you need to do to do the, the closing. And uh, there's a KB article that, that lists all those steps. Uh, it's uh, KB 87, 27, So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that you have all transactions affecting uh, inventory posted for the current year. And uh, those transactions is not just inventory transaction, but they are also uh, soft transaction, the purchasing transaction, uh, and of course the inventory transaction. But, um, we would want to do some uh, maintenance on those modules before we, uh, we start closing uh, inventory. So uh, the maintenance would be reconciling uh, those modules, and uh, there's an order which you need you want to reconcile those uh, uh, documents. Is of course it goes like if you take you would take an order, and uh, and then uh, order the the items in if you you don't have that in stock, and then receive it. In, and then it updates inventory. So the reconcile order would be the same. Uh, you reconcile soft first, then uh, purchasing, and then inventory. Uh, so the rec to reconcile those, we'll start with uh, sales order processing. This is where you go to tools, utilities, sales, and then you see two rec See two reconcile. The top one is reconcile that affects receivables. Here we want to select the reconcile remove sales document because that affects the uh, SOP module. And uh, reconcile, do the reconcile here. This you can also do it periodically uh, as part of a routine. If you see something that's doesn't look right in your sales document. What this does is that it takes an order and look at if the order has been fulfilled or uh, transferred, and and then it uh, it would uh, it would fix it. Because sometimes you you see an an order that's completely fulfilled but it's still in the the open table, then this would take care of that and send it to history. So that's the first reconcile. And then we go to the purchasing. Again, the same thing, tools, utility, purchasing. And reconcile purchasing document. The reconcile is for payables. So it reconciles uh, vendor's uh, account. Here is the purchasing uh, is uh, it reconciled the PO documents. So you don't have PO's, you don't need to do that. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All these steps would only affect you know what you're using. And so. Oh, um, for those online, uh, the question was, what's the difference? between reconcile and then reconcile the 
purchasing documents. Uh, the reconcile uh, affect payables. So it, it is the, only the vendor's uh, account and uh, then purchasing documents is for um, POs. And then, then you're ready to reconcile inventory. This, depending on uh, the amount of data that of um, items that you have, that could take maybe a few minutes, a couple of hours, or some company I've seen could take all night. So uh, you might want to do this, uh, let it run overnight. Yes. No. Take. Uh, yes. I'm select include item in history, otherwise it's going to take even longer. Uh, item history, once you've done your year end on inventory, it takes those items, uh, those transactions into history. So if you uh, exclude that, it only looks at transactions during the current year. So if you hadn't closed inventory for years, your current um, data is still going to be real big. That's one of the reasons why you want to close inventory yearly, besides other yeah, reasons. Question. All of our inventory is like the services, so there are no item quantities to update. How important is that for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 issue, the issue is going to be if something didn't post through completely. And so uh, you may still want to do this, even though they're they're not items; they're services right. mm -hmm. to make sure everything has has cleared out and posted all the way through. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, what the reconcile does is that sometimes you look at an inventory item, and you see you you see your you the available. You didn't you don't have enough quantity available. But or as the, the numbers you think you should, uh, the reconcile might fix it because it allocates uh, the item to an order that has been either deleted, avoided, and, but it still didn't update it. And so that's what ha happened when you reconcile. And you don't have to wait until the end of the, to do your uh, year end to reconcile. You can do it as part of a routine. Uh, I know some people that does that every every week or every month. So if you see a lot of, of uh, uh, discrepancies in your quantity, a reconcile might fix it. So, But again, it could take a long time. And when you do reconcile, nobody have, can be in the system doing uh, any transactions that affect inventory. So that could be sales, purchasing, and everything. So once you've got that done, uh, you're ready to do your inventory count. Uh, print uh, your inventory count. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, you can do use the stock count schedule, or we can do we create uh, a smart list that will will print all your inventory items that that have a quantity in it. Uh, it could be a, a quantity, a positive quantity or negative quantity, and print the list out, send it to Excel, and use that as your count sheet. Uh, I have an example of that set up here. Okay. 
that one. Did you do it on? No, I got the smart glue. I thought you did it here for two, so. Oh, well. But what would. Um, maybe down nine. Okay, right here. Okay. What I would do is use this uh, smart list, and then uh, you can. Yes. We don't need quantity to order. We can remove that. But we also want the the base unit of, of measure, and then create send this to Excel. And then just create a uh, a column. This is the quantity, the the count, column for quantity counted. And then another column for the variance. So then use this uh, and. You create a count sheet like, uh, like this. Oh, this. What we want to do also is, uh, is that uh, select the quantity that is dif um, different than zero. So it, that way, it doesn't print every all the items out. And then just uh, create the, the count sheet without uh, the quantity on hand. Don't don't give that out to uh, your uh, warehouse people and let them enter it in and then uh, once everything is count just plug that in and then it will compare the the actual quantity and and the quantity that's on your report and then uh, just uh, for the adjustment just enter the balance between those two columns So that's uh, just a, an easy way of doing that without using the, if you're not using the uh, the count schedule. And and so once you you get that done, then you just take the balance uh, quantity and adjustment. So it would be transaction entry. And use the valence instead, and make sure that the the um, offset, the distribution, the offset account is really the account that you want to enter that valence in. So always verify it. Usually it's default, but uh, it doesn't hurt to double check by going to distribution and verify the offset account so that you know that it goes to the correct account. Uh, once you've got that all done then print your report. Uh, the report we want to pr uh, print is uh, the either the historical st status report or uh, the HITB report, H-I-T-B, uh, historical inventory trial balance report, if you use that. And then use that to reconcile with GL. Make sure that your inventory value matched your GL. Um, there's any discrepancy. <laughs> Make sure that you find where the discrepancy is. Um, in GP 2013, they have a reconciled inventory to GL. Um, so, what it, service pack two, yes. Well, Yeah. So if you up, actually if you you update your year year end, it, you will have all that.
And then once it's, it's done, then uh, make sure you print all your uh, the report that you need. One of them is the turnover report, and uh, also maybe the serial number report or the lot number report if you're using them. And then backed up, backed up, backed up. Every time you do closing, I would don't say it enough. Always back up before you you do closing. So and then you'll be ready to close, and it's just under routine year-end close. And this you can select to uh, remove the discontinued item or sold lot attributes and sold receipt and. Uh, and also update item standard cost if you're using a periodic uh, inventory evaluation. Okay, and so, and just process it. The one thing we want to uh, mention is that for inventory, since reconcile sometimes takes that long, you can you can start that reconcile. Uh, ahead of time and leave it running overnight so so that you don't have to close that day to do all that and the, the uh, and counting inventory you can do it periodically also so do a cycle count and if that, that count uh, has been uh, accurate then you might not have to to do a final count since it's only like maybe a few days in between the time that you close and you do the, the count, so you can just go ahead and so. Um, so if you are really pre prepare and you reconcile monthly your your GL to inventory, I, I think this is going to be a really sh a short process. Okay. Then, oops. I will go back to the presentation. And um, she's already gone through much of this with the uh, inventory control year end. But it's part of your handout so that you'll, you'll be able to review them. Now we're talking a little bit about receivables management year end. Um, this uh, should be done um, at counter year end if. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the close is, uh, is done for uh, calendar years, and uh, and it needs to be done prior to posting any transactions for the next calendar year. If you're on a fiscal year and close, it should be done at the end of the fiscal year, again, prior to any posting of any transactions for the new fiscal year. And uh, part of the reason that's done is be what it affects is some of the year-to-date numbers uh, as it says here in the calendar year, it closes, clears the calendar year to date finance charges, moves them to last year. It um, uh, and it does that for the fiscal year as of those period ends, whatever they are. So um, again, the steps that should be taken for closing the year in are post all the transactions, and then you can follow the KB article 8547444 uh, on how to, uh, what the procedures are, what each step is. And if you have a tax module, uh, you want to not close it in, in a receivable, but wait to close it in payables. So it depends on, on whether you, uh, the tax module that you're using there. Yeah, the KB article did say at the end that the, of the receivable closing, that you need to go and close the, the your tax, but um, so don't don't do that yet. If you have payables, just wait until you got payables done before you close the tax. Um, some of the key points to remember: make a restorable backup, and uh, I'll reemphasize what B said is that you do a backup at each close so that you can go back to that prior close if you need to, if something happens. After each module. So after each module, do another backup. List it as a backup for a closing 
that module and you'll be able to identify what it is. Um, receivables management is not completely date sensitive uh, and as there are some date sensitive features it's best to close on on time rather than wait to close it much later. Okay, so now we'll go into um, receivables and uh, there are a couple of uh, reconciling things. You've already done the reconcile the, the sales documents because they were prior to inventory and so you can just do the reconcile which is a reconcile to the general ledger of the information that is in the detail here. You can add something. Yeah, once we get in there. <laughs> okay, in the reconcile window, you have the current customer information and then the outstanding document amount. The current uh, customer information, if you look at the, the, um, uh, the, the account balance, sometimes you, if you go to inquiry and uh, inquiry. the payment summary, it would give you the, the, the account the balance and, and the different aging period. And sometimes you see, you, you add up those aging pairs, the balance, it doesn't equal the, the balance. Reconcile uh, the customer uh, summary will fix that. It will look, go and add up all the invoice and all the payment and give you the correct balance. But then also you have the reconcile. outstanding document amounts and sometimes you have an invoice and uh, it shows that it was applied that the payment was applied to it but then you don't see you, you look at the uh, apply uh, remaining uh, amount applied you don't see any document that was really applied to it sometimes the outstanding the reconcile outstanding document will fix that it, uh, because there's something wrong with the applied table, this might be able to fix it. But it's, it, it depends on how bad the problem is or where the, all the, um, the tables are. This, you might have to do a little more to fix it, but uh, the reconciling outstanding document uh, could be a start to get everything, all the amount and everything uh, correctly. So those are the two that you would want to do. <laughs> and also, before you reconcile anything, you can just tell it, just to print the report so that you, uh, it tells you what it's going to do before you do the actual reconciling. So uh, if you just want to print the report, then unmark the reconcile. And then you can also reconcile by one customer or a, ra a range of customer or class customer. Okay. Yes. When you have a reconciled date on there, should that be whatever date we're doing reconciliation or should that be backdated to a typical? Just, the, you don't have to backdate it, it's just, just as of the, the current date. Because, like I said, all it does is just go through all the information and make sure that. The, it appears correctly, so you always want to do it as of today's date. So oh, it, it doesn't actually do anything though to the data. Yeah. Going into the yes. Um, you can actually create a checklist for with the procedures you want to do and make sure you do them in order, and uh, and then of course uh, you do the your end closing. Uh, and it give, gives you a chance to choose all or fiscal or calendar. If your fiscal year and calendar year are the same, do all. If you've got them different, you can then do them differently at the, at the dates that are appropriate. Uh, 
one thing I would like to add, when you do the closing, always check your last closing date and just to make sure that you're not doing it twice that we saw for that year. Okay, so check it. You see here there's no last closing date because this, this is fabric cam and so nobody even went in to <laughs> bother to do any closing or anything. So good point. Uh, so again, there's some KB articles you can use to follow through, particularly uh, if there's some questions on some things. Um, uh, removing each of these cover different areas. And now we'll switch over to payables. Just like, just like the receivables um, module, payables uh, closing is, is very uh, similar. Uh, so there's a, a calendar year and a uh, fiscal year, uh, if you have those uh, different. What the calendar year uh, close routine would do is just transfer all the your 1099. Uh, amount uh, in the amount since last close window from current year to last year uh, and the, uh, the fiscal year end would transfer everything else that so if you don't if you don't have 1099 you might not even need to do the, um, the calendar year And this is just what I just say. And again, just like receivables, before you, you do anything, make sure that all transactions that affect payable are posted. So um, you have uh, receive, receiving transactions then, uh, that have been things that have been received but not posted. Make sure that you post them. All payables that you save to a batch for that the current year, make sure you post. And you go to uh, series post for that module to do that. And make a, back, a backup. Again, backup. And then uh, that uh, KB article will give you step-by-step -step information on how to do the closing. So, so to post all your trans, uh, all your batch, you would want to go to in the purchasing module, go to series post, and that is where you can post everything. Uh, you might want to double check, make sure that you don't, the frequency, so that you don't post uh, recurring batch that are for the new year. Uh, and then you go to, uh, again, do the, uh, your reconcile part of the utility and this reconcile would be for payables. The reconcile summary would reconcile um, your vendor's account, Fis uh, fiscal year or calendar year. So if you select calendar year, it, it's going to affect your 1099. So if you have made any change to 1099, uh, I mean manual change to your 1099, doing reconcile here will, will get rid of all those changes and 
reverted all back to the original. So uh, make sure if you have made change, then you want to do exclude 1099 amount. Yeah, otherwise all your hard work on it will be lost. And some of the period end, uh, and I hope that you you are doing um, routines period and monthly, like reconciling your payables to GL and, and all that. So once you got that done, then uh, closing AP is really easy. So we, we always want to deselect, we always want to select uh, exclude the then? Well, no, if on, you, if, only if you have them. made. Mm -hmm. uh, them, them. Right. Otherwise, all the change. What I I, I will talk about 1099 uh, uh, pretty soon on that. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to talk about that. But uh, then you can use checklists for your the, to do your uh, period end. So you can uh, start adding a process in here that you, you use for your uh, month end or year end month and that. And just go through each of these. So uh, as part of your um, month end routine, you want to make sure that you print all your uh, AP trial balance and, and reconcile and verify that it uh, that it matched your GL amount, just like receivables. And um, if that doesn't match, there is a reconcile to GL the, the financial here, routines, there's reconcile to GL here. Oh, one thing I I can't remember for inventory if uh, if I had I don't recall if I have mentioned that in GP 2013 that you have a reconcile to GL in, for inventory. Uh, older versions don't have that, so you have to manually do it. But um, older version have reconcile to GL for AR and AP. Then, because the, there are changes to the 1099 uh, form, so you need to, if you're doing 1099, you do need to uh, install your uh, year end update so that you can print those 1099 forms um, out of GP. Uh, there's the change to the, the, the uh, dividend and uh, miscellaneous. It's just some alignment change. Uh, the 1099 interest changed from three per page onto two per page. And uh, so to, to check your 1099, What you could do is we have a smart list I created. Hope that it's saved there. I didn't save it. No. Okay, go to the, the, the vendors. And then create one where you have uh, so for your restriction, uh, the ten ninety nine type not equal to uh, not ten ninety nine vendor, so it would would take all your ten the type of ten ninety nine in there. 
and then add a column for the 1099 amount and then a, a column for amount pay uh, for for that year and compare these if they're not uh, the same it doesn't really mean that uh, it's wrong because you you could have a 1099 uh, in, invoice that part of it is not really a 1099 so it was excluded but at least this will give you um, a tool to kind of flag those vendors that that don't have these two amount match and maybe do a little research of that just to, to make sure that uh, that you got it in right so that's just a tool a quick one to to look at it and if you find anything that a discrepancy that you need to to fix you can go if you have uh, you are on version older than 2013 you can fix the amount of the 1099 manually by going to the cards uh, 1099 detail bring up the your vendor and then go to make sure you select the correct year and go to each month and you can manually change the amount here and then it will print that will print on your 1099 form so this is the part that if you were reconcile it would switch it back yes uh -huh. so, so anything that so maybe what I would recommend is that sometimes you do, do need to reconcile uh, your 1099 because I've seen it uh, on some of our clients that the 1099 amount is completely wrong and reconcile the 1099 would do that but make a note of who uh, who you you had changed or wait to make those uh, change manually until you've got that done the reconcile done and then make your change one, one of the things to point out on 1099s is those transactions have to occur when you're making the payment. It has to be checked as a 1099 payment. So if if that's not done, your numbers will be incorrect and you'll have to uh, correct them. And one way is to do it manually. One way one way would be to reverse the transaction and, and correct it. But that's a lot more work than just changing it manually. So that's why they're giving you the option there. Yeah. If, if you know right after you got your invoice posted that the 1099 selection is wrong, then void that invoice and, and re-add it correctly. But uh, if you find out after the whole year, then uh, then you can do it this way. Just go in and change the detail. Or um, also, uh, if the uh, the vendor was never set up as a 1099 then you need to change that vendor as to be a 1099 first before you can uh, uh, select him uh, in that in this window there's also a utility to change 10 1099 but in version older than 2013 you can only change a 1099 type one 1099 type to another 1099 type so if the vendor had never had any uh, transaction that had been posted as 1099 you cannot uh, change it here version 2013 you can there is a selection here from all here that you can change a vendor that had not been set up as a 1099 to one uh, and and transfer make all the transaction for that vendor be, become a 1099 transaction so that might be a, a reason to update to the GP2013 among other things
and in in that case of the, the um, if you have GP2013 and you need to update a, a, a vendor to 1099, do that utilities, and then it, you can also go and update your 1099 uh, information transaction by transaction in uh, by going to transactions edit 1099 transaction and you can bring up transaction here and change the box and the amount so this is we this is only in GP 2013 but uh, older version there is a tool a professional uh, service tool that you can use to uh, update uh, 1099 yes use that tool does that affect you being effective when you run the trial or just no it because it goes in and and correct yeah Yes, that, that's the the nice thing. If if you you correct it this way, you don't have to worry about um, reconciling and and overriding it. So uh, so after you you got your ten ninety nine reconciled and everything, then you should and your Tables to reconcile with GL, then you should be ready to do your year end. Another thing is that uh, if I know with uh, AP, you might have to wait wait until you get all the invoice from your vendors before you can close the year. So if you have transactions that you need to post for the the new year, go ahead and enter them. Save them to a batch, but don't post the batch yet. And that way, uh, you can do your uh, your year end closing, and then post the batch. Uh, and sometimes you have uh, you no, know, you have invoice in the new year that you need to pay right away. Then uh, just enter the invoice in the batch and run checks, the transaction payment. Uh, right at the same time you enter the invoice and then save the whole thing um, for before you you get your year end done and then post it afterwards. Uh, a accounting perspective might be that you would set up an account that you accrue to, and you, you if you can figure out approximately how much you need to accrue, you get that into your expenses in the accrued account. And then as these other invoices come in later on they could be against the accrued account rather than going against the expenses and that way you would you won't have your totals right for the vendor because of, of the, the whenever you've got your cut off but you can have your you can do your close out a little bit faster by doing that so that's an accounting perspective though yeah so you know you might have Transactions use a date that's going to show you to close off. That's right. The only thing, like I said at the beginning, is that uh, the, the closing would only affect the, if you do an inquiry, it would only affect the uh, amount since last close. Uh, the inquiry. Down here. Yeah, yeah. right. You you can you can look up transaction by date and everything, but except uh, the amount since glass close affect your uh, smart list. Your uh, if you bring up a, uh, a vendor and you look at the uh, last year of the current year and last year, it takes that information from the amount since last close, which is affected by the date, the, the day that you did the closing. And that's why we recommend so that uh, 
you can use all the the tools that your amount since last close is still the same as your fiscal or your uh, your uh, calendar year because you you have a view for fiscal year and the view for calendar year but the amount since last close is depending on what day real day that you do the the closing <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why we we recommend if you can uh, and the transactions for the new year, you can print check, you can do all that. Just don't post them, and then, then your amount since when you do the closing, it doesn't matter what day. Still, the information for the current year is correct, since you haven't post anything for the new year yet. Otherwise, if you had post things for the new year, your amount since last close for last year would include transaction for the new year that you have already posted before you did the, the uh, closing. So, but to do that, you can't process checks in a batch, right? You basically have to run them one of them. Well, you, you, you can process check in the batch as uh, yeah, but only the transaction entry screen, so you're basically printing them one the, at a time. The, you can process check in the batch, but it only would uh, pick uh, invoice that you have already posted. So if you have invoice for the, the new year that you have not posted yet, then, but you can process. Usually, you know, your vendors give you some terms. You don't have to pay right away, so you might have already post invoices for the, the, the current year, but you need to pay. You know, you might have a week or two or even 30 days to so, you know, process payment. So if we're unable to do that, though, what are the places that would give us up? And like, yeah, if we're doing reconciliation, fix that because most people can't. We, I, I know that we won't be able to do that because yeah. invoices that we just pay can't pay for lots of benefits that we can make sure. Uh, well, like I said, the, the, it only would affect your uh, amount since last close, and you might not have so to if use it. If we don't, don't use that, you don't need to use because, yeah. Uh, because it only affects some of the smart lists. If you run a vendor um, um, a smart list, that you want to see the year-to-date amount and the uh, last year amount, it would affect that. But if you know you you can pull up in information on transaction by day, mm -hmm. and that doesn't change anything. Your GL amount won't won't change, or, and your your even your um, Payable trial balance won't change anything. So that's your, okay. you know, how much, how much do you need to, uh, to use those, uh, those smart lists? Then it looks like this is, this is the window. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing it would affect is that if you run that that vendor uh, smart list that gives you the year to date, and uh, some people need to use that, and so that they know how how much. They've done uh, for a certain year, or, but then you can still print a, a smart list for all the transactions done during that year by date. So, so this this is that summary that I think she's talking about because it's got calendar and fiscal year, and so the numbers that would show up in here would be based on when the closing took place. Right. Uh -huh. And so when you're ready to do the year and close, again, it's under routines, year and close. And uh, select fiscal year or calendar year. Or if you the, the match, then just select all. Um, uh, print re report. Uh, you might not need to print this because it's going to just give you a list of all the transactions, all or actually all vendors that you have set up, even if there's nothing in those vendors, it's going to print out and it just tell, say that this amount has been transferred and you won't need that. And it, the report could be hundreds of pages long if you have a lot of vendors. And with one thing again is make sure before you do anything, look at that closing, last closing date to make sure that you, that someone else hadn't done the closing for you uh, already for that year. 
minutes one more question. Mm -hmm. So do you need to print 1099s before you close or does it matter? No, because you can off you can print when you print 1099. You can select the year right here. So as all it does is that it would uh, take the uh, the uh, year to date 1099 amount in that view and move it to last year. So and it, it's on the uh, uh, since last uh, close. And um, so now that you've got, if you uh, do tax, uh, like sales tax and use tax, uh, then this is when you do the uh, tax closing. So, and that closing would be on It, so it's under routine uh, company and then tax year and close. So are you saying that you have a separate tax software is that what you're No, no, it's, it's you collect you know, you collect sales tax or uh, you pay use tax and, and you, you need to track that that. Again, sorry. It, it is under routines, okay. tools, routines, and it's uh, company. Okay. I, I can't get it. That's your close. And I know of a lot of people who don't even close the, the tax. And, you know, closing again, just like it will just uh, transfer the, uh, the current year into uh, last year. And uh, even with tax, you can also, you, you can always look up the, the, the tax by date. And that information would still be there by year, by, you know, and so the closing doesn't do anything to it. So if you miss the closing one year, it's it's and yeah, it, it, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> All right, I think lunch is ready. So if we you can go ahead no, and go, go this way. This way. <laughs> <laughs> go, go this way and down the hallway and break for lunch uh, for 15 minutes so we'll be back around 12:20start talking about fixed assets here, year-end closing for those. Um, some people don't use fixed assets, but we, I, I think I've found over the years that uh, it's actually pretty useful to use it, track uh, the things that you have got to pay property taxes on and insurance and stuff on. And uh, what the fixed asset module does is help uh, calculate the depreciation so what the year-end closing does for that, um, and, and again, it's recommended to be done after 
uh, you close payables because some of the transactions can come from payables as you purchase fixed assets. And you can have multiple books. So you can have a, a tax book, you can have a um, uh, huh? Say it again, louder. <laughs> Corporate book. Corporate book, yeah. I couldn't think of it. AMTs, yep, yeah, yeah. All of those can be separate. But the important thing to know here is that all of those have to be closed for the year before you can close each book separately, but you have to have them all closed before you can start processing in the new year. Um, every year it seems like there's some changes to uh, some of the fixed asset uh, depreciation deductions that are allowed. Uh, in 2013 there is a, a change in the maximum for luxury automobiles and we've added the website, the government site that uh, you can learn about that at if you're interested. Um, but that's one of the changes that takes place as a part of the, the updates and things. Um, what does the year in closing do? do? It uh, takes the uh, year-to-date uh, maintenance amounts and clears them, um, expands the last maintenance window date, copies the quantities over, uh, and then in the, the books, it closes out the depreciation for the year and uh, uh, will update the cost bases and, and uh, principal life and those kinds of things for the new year. Uh, all You must run depreciation through the last day of the fiscal year. That's one of the important things and before you do the year in close. You need to print all your reports and save them. We kind of recommend that you use uh, uh, the report to a file and uh, save them on a record. Uh, you need to do a backup and then follow the steps in the KB that's listed there for, following, for going through and closing out the fixed assets. So let's, we need to look at that quickly. Yeah. Uh, so you're done for six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're going to uh, start on um, closing the GL, which is the big thing, the big one. <laughs> um, yeah, just in some way, make sure that you close all the sub uh, ledgers before you you do um, the closing on GL and uh, the sub ledgers uh, you can close anytime you're ready for for them uh, you don't have to wait until you're ready to close uh, GL the, to do that so m most of the time people have to get you know have to get time to do the, the actual uh, GL closing because there's a lot of uh, more things that they need to do before they can, they're ready to close GL. Um, so uh, again, it gives you the, uh, the order in which the uh, sub-ledgers need to be closed. Enter key. Uh, what does the year and close process do for GL? Uh, it, the, it's going to take all the uh, P&L accounts and close it out to retain earnings. Uh, so um, all the, the P&L account the beginning bounds for the new year should be zero out. Uh, and then all the balance sheet account are uh, updated. So it brings the uh, the the ending amount as the beginning balance for uh, the new year. The re and then uh, the retained earnings account, account or accounts are updated with the amount from the PNL account. 
and you can set up so that uh, you you can use just one retain earning account or you can close to divisional retain earning account. <laughs> So I, once you got the uh, GN done, the retained earnings account is the should only the should be the only balance sheet account that would have a, a different beginning balance from the ending balance. If you see that any of your balance sheet account has something different, then there might be something wrong with it. And uh, the all the tra the transactions, the GL transaction would be m moved from the GL uh, twenty thousand table to the GL thirty thousand table. And the fiscal period tables would be uh, updated and marked as the uh, the year as historical once you got it closed. Uh, then all the uh, inactive GL accounts will automatically be removed if you have uh, GP older than uh, 2013. In 2013, you have the selection to keep those inactive accounts. And it moves all the history uh, to create the beginning balance entries if you have uh, um, analytical accounting. <coughs> So to close the year, this uh, KB article would give you step-by-step -step, uh, procedures for closing GL. <coughs> yes? On the inactive account, do you have an account that used to be active a couple years ago and you kept it as inactive? Can it be moved back to it? Right. To uh, to really remove the inactive uh, in account, it has to have no bounds, no history, not or not on any unposted transaction. So it'll just remove empty inactive. Right. right. Without any or history exactly. either. Sometimes the reason some people. Uh, it will remove it, it even if it fit all those conditions. But if you have it on the budget, it would still remove it. Uh, like I said, for a version older than 2013, you, you don't have a choice. If it fits all those um, conditions, then it's going to be removed. Some people create those uh, accounts, put them on the budget for the um, next year. But then they don't want anything enter into that account for this year, so the market inactive. That those accounts will will be removed if if you don't have GP twenty thirteen. So be be careful. Make sure that all the accounts that you have not entered anything on, but you want to keep it because you uh, then change them before before you do your year end because they will be automatically removed. So maybe you can run a smart list uh, on inactive account only and then find the ones that you need to keep and then change the, uh, to active. Uh, there are some for GL. There are some important points that you need to do. Again, back up. Uh, and the the closing process will take all the transactions and then to transfer them into a, uh, another table. So it need, during that process, it needs this space. So make sure that you have uh, enough this space available to cover. All the, the tables, and uh, it's uh, usually recommended that you do that on the server because it's, you have more space, and then it's mm -hmm. going to be faster. 
and just like any uh, other clothing, make, uh, all um, everybody have to be out of uh, GP except for the per, uh, the person doing the clothing. And um, the the GM routine. Sometimes if you look at, at the, it seems like it it stopped around halfway through and it doesn't like it looks like it's not doing anything but it is doing something in the background so don't panic if it seems to hang for yes from I'm I'm getting I'm getting to that <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's go into um, just like any other um, module. Make sure that you post all transactions that you have for the current year. So mm -hmm. make sure that uh, uh, sometimes you post. And look, even look into transactions that uh, are from uh, your um, subledgers because sometimes you close those subledgers, but a transaction for the current year had to be done even after you close them. Make sure that those are post and then the the, uh, uh, the GL batches are post for those also. Yes. Are you going to show that? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've shown the series post for uh, the uh, uh, subledgers, but in financial, it would be. In the series post here for the GL, you'll see all the open batch. And there's a lot in here for Fabricam. So make sure that those get posted. Um, there's also under tools routines, there's a master posting. The series post pertain to each series. The master posting is all batches from any series will be in here. Uh, so you can post them from, from the master posting also. Uh, it's one thing, the master posting uh, window, sometimes you might want to restrict uh, access to that window so that only people who really know what what that the play would get in there. Otherwise you, you know you could have someone posting batches that are not supposed to be posted. Um, another thing is that um, we need to make sure that we have a um, fiscal period set up for uh, the, the new year. So oh, it's under tools, setup, company, and fiscal period. How do you set up a new period? All you have to do is just, let me see, they have 2018. So I'm going to set up uh, 2019. Type it in and verify that the first day and the last day is correct and just hit calculate and it will create those uh, fiscal periods for you. Um, I Sometimes I think it's better to change the period name instead of period one, two, and three. Just put if it's uh, a calendar year or year, then put January, February, all that and change it so that you, you recognize it and some transaction you, it shows up 
and, and that way it's easier for you to really know which month or which period it, it is. Comes up and it's close. But if it's close to the year, but it comes up, it's what you I guess too. Yeah. Just because it's using the user date, is it smaller than that? Yeah. You see it, let me check that. Maybe. Um, yeah, well, I'll take doing it. <coughs> Maybe. Yeah, I'll check we're, on we're that. We're going to fiscal year, so I closed 2013 about September. Yeah. And every time I go into this, it brings up year two of 2013. So during this term, maybe it'll change. Maybe I should log in as a January 1st, 14th. It doesn't seem like it's ever happened before to me, though. It's been so many years, but yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. that. Um, but when you create a new year, just <coughs> make sure that you you close all, and then just open the period that you you need to use. Otherwise, it's it sometimes it's uh, easy, uh, especially like now you're in, you're in December, mm -hmm. and you it uh, put in the year automatically when you do a, uh, a transaction, and sometimes you don't check the year and you could. That's where I was. Go, go one more. Oh, I hate this thing. Uh, in the ledger, right? I'm under this screen. I have to be I'm moving box. Mark, yeah. It says uh, posting to history. Allow posting to history. Check and see if that's marked. So, what that does is it allows you to go back to your historical year. Okay. Uh, actually, I know mine is because you should always, yeah, you should always have it marked. And that's that's so. No. <laughs> actually, I was going to get to that too. But for other reasons, so since we're on there, yes, that that box has to be marked for you to be able to, if you've closed the year and you have adjusting entries to go back and then uh, so you can post to historical year. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, you yeah. should always have this marked. And I, I think everybody yeah. has it as a default. And check that the, your uh, retained earnings account here is the correct um, account. You can also close to divisional account segment. You select that way. Make sure that you have a retaining retain earnings account for each of those div uh, division and so the the uh, the account the the account needs to be the same number the only thing that would be different uh, is the uh, divisional the uh, division segment because if you have that th them set up with the the uh, account being different it won't recognize it as a retained earnings account. You can call it retained earnings account, but it's not going to recognize it. And so it's going to come up with uh, an error that you don't have a um, retained earnings account set up for the, that division. So 
So we once we got everything, um, all the account, the all the batches posted. The most important thing that I think uh, that you need to do before you do the closing is to verify your posting account setup. That your balance sheet account are really balance sheet and uh, P and L accounts are really P and L because that's how it it uh, defines where your the if those account would be clear into retain earnings or not. So you can call something, uh, you know, if you select the category and it's a P&L, but you don't have it uh, set up correctly, it's not going to recognize it. And so uh, right here, this is where that needs to be checked to make sure that you have the co correct setting. Um, because once you got your uh, closing done and the account was set up correct, uh, incorrectly, you might have uh, the p and accounts that get uh, um, forwarded bounce and yeah. your. <laughs> but <laughs> that is a fix. That's always the it's fix. A pain, it's a pain in the butt to fix. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's cool. that's a fix for everything. So. <laughs> But uh, it's better to have that uh, correct before you do the closing. So um, you can create a smart list uh, to verify those posting uh, accounts. And um, it would be So go to accounts, and that uh, I've created the smart list here. So you can do it like an exception. So you you select the uh, the the natural account because uh, that's what determine your your uh, posting type. Uh, Usually, your all P and L accounts are like for uh, the natural account would be four thousand and higher. So I'm gonna look if, uh, and find account that are set up as balance sheet, but that has uh, a number greater than three nine 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 nine, which is the the highest number that a balance sheet account would be for you. Your charter of account might be di different, but uh, and then the account type has to be uh, a posting account because you you might have unit accounts and and non financial uh, accounts or other type of account that are balance sheet account, but then the numbering could be different. So if I run this. It's going to give me a list of the, those accounts that are that have a number that is not um, the right uh, numbering, and like this one, this account it has a posting type of balance sheet, but it's really a sales account, so it should be a P and L. All you have to do is just double click on this. It takes you to the, um, the card maintenance and change it and then move on move on to the next one so it makes it real easy and you do the same <laughs> with account <coughs> too far do the same with accounts that are set up as PL account an exception Luckily, there's none. But if anything you do, I think that's something that you need to do every year because you might have set uh, set up something, some account you already checked the previous year. Someone can go in there and you know click on and change it without even knowing that they did that. So always run that before you 
and uh, you do any um, clothing for GL. And talking about a type of accounts, you might uh, also have a unit account uh, that you set up. Those accounts are um, a balance sheet type. It's uh, and up to the version uh, 2013, you you can some of those unit accounts. You might not want to uh, forward. The, the the balance, but since they are um, balance sheet account, the ending balance will be forward over to the next year as a beginning balance. So if you didn't want to do that, you have to run a script to clear the uh, the ending balance on those unit account uh, from outside of GP. But with GP 2013, when you set up those unit accounts, you can select at that time whether you want the the, the ending balance to uh, to be forward over to the new year. And so. You can uh, existing account. Uh, you can change it to clear the balance. So when you do right here now so the uh, unit account right here now you can you have a selection yeah if you you mark this at the t uh, for the account then at the end of uh, when you do the closing it would automatically clear it. but if you don't have it marked then it would forward the balance so you have you have a, a, a choice Right. This is GP 2013 only. Yeah, you, you can zero it out, but there's also a script that will let you do that. And. Um, But once you upgrade it, you have that selection. So even if you have those accounts set up before you upgrade, you can go in and, and mark to clear them out. <laughs> we, there might be a script that, would, that we can go in and mark them all if you have. Yeah. And we talked about inactive account, right? So the, 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 it would be cleared out if it uh, match some condition. Um, so again, with uh, that's file maintenance, the reconcile. Uh, you, you so run that. So you, you can reconcile the, the year or batches. Um, and if you don't do that, if you have not seen any discrepancy or anything, that it, it's fine. It's, it's recommended, but it, you, like any other reconcile uh, utilities, it's, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, and then. Uh, you're ready. So make sure that you do all your backup. And then also print all the reports that you need to uh, keep, uh, like the detailed trial balance. That, just like any other report for the, um, the whole year, it might take a, a long time to print, or also could be a lot of pages. So we recommend for those to print them to to file. 
and save them and uh, rather than uh, print out to a printer and especially you know if something happens to the printer then you're stuck so let it print to um, to file that, that you can reprint them when you uh, you're ready for them um, print your financial statement also and then you would be ready to close the year and that would be And that could be after your audit, your year end audit, mm -hmm. and your tax, you know, your. Mm -hmm. Yes, all. February, March, and February. Right, huh? but you still yeah. want to to close as uh, soon as you can. Uh, remember that even after you close, you can still go in and make adjusting entry. And uh, you might want to close it so that you have your, your balance sheet account. Forward so that you have the the amount, and then yeah. you do your adjusting entries afterwards. Some reconciliation. That's no. right. You you, you can't. Uh, <laughs> you get errors. <laughs> Sometimes it takes several months for your auditor to get back with you with all the adjusting entries. So once you get most of it in that you know, uh, that then goes your GL, and then wait for uh, the auditor to uh, come back with, with your adjusting entry. Uh, once you close, you end the adjusting entries, it's going to go through, the GP is going to go through the process of the closing uh, for you. So you just end an entry and then it takes care of everything for you, bringing uh, balance sheet account forward or uh, clearing P&L entries into retained earnings. It, it goes through that for you. And uh, so you have that selection. I talked about the the, main, the, the inactive account in version older than GP2013. It would automatically remove the inactive account if it it uh, matched the condition uh, for those inactive accounts. Uh, here you have a choice to maintain. It's not only all of them, but you have a selection. Uh, if you only want to maintain an active account that are with the that have a mountain budget, or you can maintain all the inactive accounts. So you have two choices here. Uh, it it uh, well history. Uh, an inactive account, you can't have um, history. So if it, you have history, it won't, it won't remove it. And uh, again, one, uh, and make sure the the um, the report, the closing report, make sure that you you save it and uh, so that you have uh, that um, so print print to screen print to printer but also print to your uh, your file and save so that you can have that and uh, look at double check your last closing date again and then you're ready to close so just close the year uh, the one thing here is that the inversion previous to GP 2013, it, you don't really have a progress bar, so it kind of it, it gives you the percentage, and but then it stops. And uh, with GP 2013, you have a progress bar that tells you which steps it's going through and how much of the, those steps, what percentage of those steps have been completed or what it's going through so you you know that the, the progress of what is going uh, through so that's, that's a little more peace of mind for you that it, it is going through all those processes I, I was just
curious if there was a maximum journal entry number that you're aware of. Um, you know, it could be maybe the the uh, the length. Not sure. It might be the yeah. It might be the length of. Uh, Yes. Nine, nine, nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus you, you, you can you can start the a different journal entry as long as those entries have to be unique if they are all in the, the an open year. But if they are in a uh, historical year, then uh, they have so. Okay. So you're saying it's kind of like a judgment of the entry that it shows that there is no link to the one of the transaction. Yeah, just just do it like you would enter any uh, transaction. It's just make sure you change the the year of the date to the uh, correct. Uh, yeah, so yeah. All those it does everything for you. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Just end your transaction mm -hmm. like normal. That's right. <laughs> so where do you find these KD articles? Is there any customer source? Customer source. Okay, I guess we it's one o'clock, and so we're really doing great on time. We're just. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs>